Checked with quorum, we've got five. Uh, can I remind members that this meeting will be recorded and ask members to note the mobile phone should be switched off as they interfere with the recording. Uh, the devices should be switched to mute, which is FA and then F8. Uh, can I remind members to declare their interest as appropriate throughout the meeting? And can I remind members that following today's short meeting, the committee farm safety event will run from 3 p.m. to 5, uh, commencing at the front of the building, uh, followed by presentations in the long gallery, and then a finger in the buffet. I declare the meeting open to the public. I could also uh, wish everybody here a uh, happy, prosperous New Year. Uh, I hope you had a, a nice rest uh, over the. Christmas period. Uh, agenda item number one there's apologies. I have an apology from uh, Robin Swan. And uh, there are any other apologies? No other apologies, then we'll move on. Agenda item two then is chairperson's business. Can I advise members that the deputy chairperson Joe Byrne and myself uh, met, uh, uh, met met with members of the EFRA committee at Westminster on the 12th of December 2013. Seems a long time ago now, Joe. Yeah. Uh, but I note all the meeting is at pages five and seven, uh, with a Hansard on the fisheries debate in the House of Commons at pages eight to twenty. Uh, eight. Just just on that, we actually uh, I had a brief discussion with Paul Robbins that day. Right. On the corner, I remember. Ah, in the corner, aye. And then I met. We said hello in the corner, and I happened to bump into him. Uh, on my own. Uh, it just shows you how things can happen and, and not to take anything for granted. Uh, but the, the 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 minutes are there, uh, members, for your perusal. Uh, can I advise members that, as agreed, myself and the uh, deputy chairperson will be meeting with Farmers for Action next Monday, 20th of uh, 20th uh, January at 2 p.m. in room 29. And the meeting is to discuss a proposed bill on farm gate prices, and all members are welcome to attend. Uh, repeat Monday next Monday 20th at 2 p.m. Uh, in room 29. Again, that's scheduled uh, to be during question time. Uh, so, uh, also, uh, then could I just raise? Uh, maybe we should do this under any of our business. But could I just raise uh, as a chairperson? I've received a lot of correspondence on the remote sensing issue uh, from uh, constituents and farmers who has. We have. We were not informed that they were uh, involved in an inspection because it was a remote sensing inspection. Mm. Now there are 1,100 of these, or nearly even 12. I think the minister said yesterday. Uh, it, I've written to the minister, asked questions on it. The the minister came back to say that the reason why they hadn't been notified is because it would have messed up with European legislation and would have meant then that the constituent could not have, or the farmer could not have amended their application. Well, I would simply say to that, well, look, if they were inspected on foot, they wouldn't be able to amend their application at that point. And I do think it is a bit of a red herring. Uh, could this committee uh, take up this case and ask the question of the minister why these farmers weren't notified until weeks before they were due to get their single farm payment, uh, because it has left them in dire straits with regards to cash flow. Banks were expecting this payment in, grain men were expecting this payment in, and all sorts of pressures are now put on to farmers just because they happen to have an inspection and they just happen to have a remote censoring inspection. Uh, and there has been no forward planning. I do believe that the, the department has just basically overlooked the fact that they should have been communicated with. Because when you get an inspection on foot, people are out on the ground and people see that they're there. Uh, Tom, you want to come in? Yeah, uh, Chair. I, I would certainly agree with you that the committee should, should take this up with the Minister. I mean, I do have constituents, and uh, the first thing they knew about it was when they received a letter to say that they'd been subject to such an inspection. And when I contacted the Minister, on the, the images that were used for this were taken between May and August of 2013, and yet they're not being dealt with until February of this year, I've been told. So, you know, that's whenever they're going to be looked at. So from August, from between May and August, and then they're sitting somewhere in the department until February of this year, until they're being looked at. And again, that's going to then delay the farmer and getting the money. People who were expecting, as, as the chair has rightly said, to have this money in their banks uh, to help the cash flow, 
and put all this type of thing and again here are a number of farmers and they're being um, they're being held back and I would have thought I would have thought surely that the department could have worked a lot quicker on this since they had their images in in good time but to allow them to lie or lapse for a number of months before they even look at it I, I don't think it's on um, given the situation that the farming um, has found themselves in in the last few years and we all know that the farmers over the, the last number of years has had this difficulty with the cash flow and this is something that has been helping them and for these people to be if you like dropped into this situation not aware of it until perhaps very very close to Christmas maybe when they got a letter to say it it's simply not good enough and I think as a committee we need to be taking this up with the department asking the questions and seeking to uh, try to get them to move this forward as quickly as possible yeah on that point Tom I believe they only they only were going to write to the farmers uh, I put the urgent written question into the Minister on a Thursday and it was only after that that they decided to write to yeah. you. So uh, I, I believe they have overlooked yeah. these uh, 1,200 farmers. Absolutely. Joanne? Thanks Chair. I would just like to concur with your comments and Tom McCann's this is a massive, massive issue out there. I've had representation from a lot of farmers affected through my colleagues Tom Elliott and Robin Swan and um, I think Tom, Thomas McCann summed it up very, very well. The hardship that this is leading to out there and with so many suppliers that are having major, major difficulties with the cash flow, flow because the farmers had relied on their single farm payment to pay their bills. So the knock-on effect is potentially, all of our rural businesses affected, is potentially devastating. So I think it would be remiss of us not as a committee. I think it is a matter of urgency to get some answers to this because this money is needed and it's needed now. Okay. I think you, well, yeah, well, Mr. Chairman, yeah, there's absolutely no doubt questions need to be asked. If images were taken in midsummer <coughs> and um, haven't been dealt with, there was, as uh, my colleague Tom McKenna said, there's been five or six months uh, to deal with those inspections, and now we're, you know, a month or more past the payment time, and, and these haven't yet been dealt with. I think it's not good enough, and I mean, certainly we need to ask the question why they weren't dealt with earlier. Okay, and, and Deputy Chairperson Joe Byrne? Yeah, Chairman, I would go along with the general gentleman. I think these 1,200 farmers are the unfortunate <coughs> and the victims. It's not their fault, but unfortunately they're going to become the sufferers of the penalty and they're not going to get paid until well into 2014. And I think there needs to be some degree of emergency created to try and rectify this problem that's not they're making. Okay, thank you. Uh, members agreed? Yeah, right, asking, yeah. seeking answers. Can, uh, just one other issue on, on the chairperson's business, just with regards to the event today. Uh, we've been provided with uh, uh, badges here at Stop and Think Safe, and we've been asked, just as members of the committee attending that event, if we could uh, uh, well, and we'll give them out. We'll give them out now. It's only something that's fell on our laps here. <coughs> uh, just for promotion, obviously, as, and, and to maximise the event as much as possible, members. Uh, thank you. Uh, moving on then, agenda item number three, uh, minutes of the meeting on the 3rd of December 2013. Can I refer members to draft minutes of that meeting on pages 30 to 34? Are members content that the draft minutes are accurate? If so, I will say. Agreed. Members agreed? Yeah. Thank you. OK, then, agenda item number four is matters arising. Uh, can I refer members to matters arising at pages 35 to 85? Are members content to action matters arising as suggested on the index sheet, or are there some issues that members want to raise? Members content? OK. OK. Agreed, then. Agenda item number five, then. Is the SR 2013/295 less favoured area compensatory allowances regulations Northern Ireland 2013? Can I refer members to the memo from the clerk at pages 87 to 88 and the SR explanatory memorandum at pages 89 to 102? Can I advise members that the SL1 was considered and approved by the committee at the meeting on the 3rd of December 2013? The SL1 is set every year to establish the rules and rates of payment. Payment under the scheme has two elements. The first is land-based and the second is a cattle bonus. It is paid on a yearly basis under the Northern Ireland Rural Development Programme. 
The Department advises that the rates will remain the same as last year and payments should be made early March 2014. As the LaFaca scheme is included in the uh, Rural Development Programme, which is subject to public consultation, there is no requirement for a further consultation specific to this scheme. Uh, can I seek comments from members? If there are no comments I, and members are content, I put the question. Uh, that this Committee for Agriculture and Rural Development has considered SR 2013-295, the less favoured area compensatory allowances regulations Northern Ireland 2013, and has no objections to the rule. Agreed? Agreed. Okay, members, thank you. Uh, agenda item number six, then, is the SR 2013-304, the Seeds Miscellaneous Amendments Regulations Northern, Northern Ireland 2013. Can I refer members to the memo from the clerk at pages 104 and the SR Expansionary uh, Memorandum at pages 105 to 111? Uh, can I advise members that this legislation was considered and approved by the committee at the meeting on the 10th of December 2013? The legislation has no practical application in Northern Ireland as there are currently no registered producers of fodder plant seeds or tomato growers. Uh, can I seek comments from members? Uh, if content, then I put the question that the Committee for Agriculture and Rural Development has considered SR 2013-304, the Seeds Mis Miscellaneous Amendments Regulations Northern Ireland 2013, and has no objections to the rule. Agreed? OK, members, uh, pushing on rightly. Uh, agenda item number seven then is correspondence. Can I refer members to the correspondence received at pages 115 to 226? Are members content to action correspondence as suggested on the index sheet, or are there members who wish to raise something? Joanne? Thanks, Chair. I wanted to raise the one on reasonable force. Just reading it, I think it, I think it's just scans like this that makes it more and not less confusing for homeowners and especially farmers. And to hear that crime figures are 2.9 per cent lower, I think it's cold comfort for farming families. Surely the best preventative measure would be strong convictions for criminals. Um, Chair, wh when is this information, especially crime prevention farm section, going to be published? Because surely the best people to give their views are the farmers themselves. So yes. Just somewhat disappointed that we're still, given the recent debates and issues in farm crime, I just think it's somewhat. Chairman, okay. can, I, can, I, can I generally support what John's saying? I have to say I met senior police officers last week about this issue relating to farm thefts and farm crime, and uh, I didn't get a very reassuring uh, answer to my questions. And I, I'm aware that William Irwin has had the same experience in his part of the world, and I think uh, this situation in relation to this. It's becoming questionable. I have to say it regrettably, and I said that the senior officer that I met. There are many law abiding people in the community that want to see policing work and function and operate effectively. And I'm not so sure that the detective branch of the policing service is pursuing this sort of crime vigorously. Too many farmers have been left to become detectives themselves, and I think it's disturbing. Thanks, Joe. Okay, uh, well, yes, Mr. Chairman, yeah, <coughs> we had. Uh, a number of uh, thefts of tractors uh, over a four or five day period whereby actually there's been two more stolen actually from the weekend. One on Sunday morning, an attempt was made and the, 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 the farmer apprehended the guy at the scene. One on Saturday evening at the age of dark, the age I'm at. But I mean, farmers uh, in two, two farmers involved finding their own tractors 20 odd miles away from home, they, they uh, became detectives themselves and asked. Uh, at houses and also got CCTV cameras uh, that you know seen the tractors going past at a couple of different uh, 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 places. So I mean, uh, I'm meeting again with police this week, but police are actually embarrassed, uh, and it's clear that they're embarrassed that farmers can go and find their tractors themselves, and they don't seem to be able to do that. Now, it's probably the re in, in fairness to police. Uh, and it's a problem that I think this assembly has, I mean, if we can deal with it. There's people before the courts five, six, seven, and eight times, and they're walking free. I mean, judges and magistrates are letting them walk free. I mean, and these are career criminals. And 
how, how police can do, even police does bring these people before the courts. They're walking away with very small sentences and in some cases no sentences. And one instance the police inspector told me that uh, a, a gang of boys and there were eight times before court and they, didn't, and they were walking away every time. So that's very frustrating for police officers too. So I'm not so sure. In the long term, I think sentencing and uh, that end of things need to looked at also, whereby, uh, you know, police need to take it more serious. There's absolutely no doubt about that. OK. Uh, sorry, Tom, you can yeah, just to, to, to agree with what has been said, and I mean, the same thing has happened in our own area, and police are far too reluctant for to to step in and to do anything whenever, you know, uh, down in, 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 in West Tyrone and the farmer found the, the vehicle hidden in a forest and contacted the police, but the police wouldn't put no surveillance on, they would do nothing. Uh, and the farmer went and lifted the tractor, the tractor was stolen again a few days later, and about what four or five weeks time was found again and again there was no surveillance or nothing put on that now you know i can't understand why the police seem to be backing away from this and they're not uh, to me they're not doing the work that they should be doing and again it's left to the farmers if the farmer doesn't go and look about the vehicle it's not definitely not going to be got and i do believe that the police needs to do more on this but again from if the perpetrators then are found, then I think it's um, uh, it's up to the courts then to ensure that they place a stiffer sentence on. But, you know, if surveillance was put on something where um, a machine is sitting hid and the folk coming to get it were caught red-handed, then surely that, that gives the police a much better case uh, even whenever it goes to the court. And this type of thing is not happening. And I have to be critical of the police, I have to say. Uh, because I don't believe that they're doing what the, what the, what they should be doing, and in this very area where uh, where that, that I'm talking about in West Tyrone, quite a number of m uh, pieces of machinery has been stolen even since that, and they set up one of these farm safe watch groups. And I do know that a number of people that's involved in that are so frustrated and fed up with it that they're going they're going to walk away from it you know, because the field is still not delivering. It's not doing nothing. There's no contact uh, as there should be. And these are all farmers in a rural area who are trying to um, make a living from their farming, and yet no, you know, their machinery is being stolen. And I think one of the other worrying factors which happened. Uh, Prior to Christmas, was where um, folk went into a, a, a night dwelling, a night farm, if you like, for to take a tractor, a brand new tractor that was there, couldn't get it started. So what they did was they, they, they decided we can't take a tractor, well we'll just burn the, the premises to the ground, and that's what they did. And burned all the machinery, destroyed all the machinery that was there. So it is it is a big problem, uh, and I believe it's for a number of not only the police but also <coughs> the courts and all to ensure that this is tightened up. And I do know that while this being again a voice through this committee. It's, it's also a matter, I believe, for the Justice Committee that they take something on and make sure that, that they try and bring forward some maybe type of legislation that will try and tighten up the, the sentences now for these folk if they are gotten brought to the courts. Okay, thank you. Ian Mill. Chair, uh, maybe it's already in place, you know, but should we not request you know, a meeting with the police here as a committee you know, to have them come in and, and uh, just hear from our point of view you know, the problems that are experienced there by farmers and see you know, exactly from them what their plan is you know, to deal with the, mm -hmm. the problem? You know? Is yeah. that possible? Uh, well, I, again, as chairperson, I've always been very, very careful with regards to procedure, uh, and there has been calls over the last number of months and even years. Uh, I know that Oliver has been very vociferous in this regard. I know that Joanne also has raised this on various occasions. Since the, the Justice Committee has asked us for our views on this aspect, uh, and they do, on their letter, they do state that this has originated from the debate, the Assembly debate about the agri-crime. Uh, so it has originated from this committee. I do feel it in writing back with our response to the Justice Committee. We could ask the Justice Committee uh, or seek uh, approval or permission from them to actually go and try and set up a meeting. Now, if we have to do that in a joint procedure with the Justice Committee, I'm happy enough, if you're happy enough, Fair enough yeah, uh, to have that, if it gets us round yeah. the procedural side of things. Uh, what I would be keen to do, and I think what we have written uh, to the police on 
lately, and we have very stark answers, if anything yet, is on the Agriculture and the Rural Task Force. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit like their wildlife branch. It's basically one personnel, mm -hmm. one person uh, dealing with it. Now, if that's how they hope to move forward in the future and tackle this serious issue, then it's not going to be tackled at all. Uh, so I think we do need to have... We did have an informal meeting at the time, and again, we're no further forward. So I do think if we can ricochet it up a, a few notches, or ratchet it up a few notches, and, and maybe engage with the Justice Committee to see what more can be done to push this further, I'm happy enough to proceed. Oh, I propose it's considering that Justice Committee has written to us looking for our views, are members content with that approach? Mr Chairman, can I also mention, not alone have we got thefts of machinery and tractors, but we also have a growing problem with theft of animals. Mm -hmm. uh, I listened to a program on Saturday morning, RTD Countryways, and they talked about 400 animals on the southern side of the border. But I'm very aware of people on the northern side who have lost the And one farmer has come to me, and he has lost nine animals in the farm area. Mm -hmm. And there are others. So I think there needs to be a standard documentation about what animals have been stolen and an update in some way prevent regarding the numbers that have been involved in the thing. Mr. Okay. Chairman, at this moment, does the committee give the response to the Justice Committee yet? No, that, what basically our views have been today is what we're going to be giving okay. back to uh -huh. the Justice. Uh -huh. I think it is important that sentence and, you know, it, oh, well, I, I'm sure most of us in this committee are, if not all of us, would think that sentence and at the end of the day is, is much too lenient. Um, I mean, in my area, as the Deputy Chair talks about livestock, that, that <coughs> there was a number of livestock stolen about six weeks ago. And have arrested the, the, the guy killed him in a local abattoir and he is arrested lifting the check. Now he's out on bail at the moment. So it will be interesting to see what sort of a sentence that guy gets now. But they almost caught him red handed, so it will be interesting. Uh, again, just for context, the, the committee, the Justice Committee wrote to us with regards to the work that they have been doing on this specific issue of uh, the reasonable force. Uh, but they also included the whole Annex A, which is crime prevention, protection and reasonable force. So again, we are using that invitation to write back to them to uh, apply pressure here to see what more can be done. Yeah. Are members content? Yeah. Uh, is there anything else we we, we think, now that you all know that we're actually going to respond to the Justice Committee, is there anything else we need to add in to what has already been stated? It, it, it was at the very start that very, very insistent that uh, agriculture and crime was, was separated totally. Yes, I, I agree, yeah. Ordinary crime. Yeah, it's, it's, this is not about crime that happens in the countryside that would happen in the town. No. This is all about specific agricultural crime uh, on farm, uh, machinery and uh, livestock. Let me get out, Mr Chairman, that, uh, and it was brought to my attention by one farmer, like, the steel tractor was fifty thousand. Like I mean, if they robbed the bank, they would hardly get fifty thousand. If you understand, it, the, it is big money involved. So, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. And when it comes to statistics, a very good point. When it comes to, to statistics, and they tell us that there's not as much crime in rural areas as there is in the town, they equate one theft of a tractor the same way as one theft of a Mars bar. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so uh, that's that's how it's. You know, you talk, you talk about these tractors and machinery on fifty thousand. 60,000, whatever the price of the tractor is, if you have the car of the equivalent price, a lot of anti-theft devices are already in that car, and you don't seem to have the equivalent in that's agriculture right. and machinery. And maybe that's something else we should be raising, because, uh, you know, it, it, if it's going to be a cost, the cost is going to go into the price anyway. And we might as well be looking for that too. You know, in all honesty, because the gentleman on TV I was listening to the other night, uh, he quite rightly said, if you can steal a tractor and all of that there and drive down country roads for miles and, and park them up elsewhere and undetected, there has to be some other protection for the man that's buying that £60,000 tractor or machine. OK, thank you. Over. Uh, Dale? I uh, just almost... Uh, uh, almost mostly thinking what I was thinking. Um, I think that... Um, I had a farmer in with me the other day, and he, he came in the scene about single farm, him and he'd been delayed, but he had startled some people in the back of his house recently who were in the process of attempting to steal some of his machinery. And I, can, I, I was totally taken aback at the, the emotional impact that, and he feels very, very, very vulnerable. 
Well, I was going to say, and I don't know where I would fit with the priorities, and you know, certainly not where we went to Pillar 2 debate here, but you know, is there any merit in asking about the possibility of some type of basic security equipment to be included as part of the Pillar 2 scheme? No, in the rule of that program? But we're actually meeting uh, minister officials are coming up. Remind me against Stella. Uh, sorry, they, we're, we're going to read the officials up, but if you go back to, and I'm trying to find it here for you, under matters arising. Um, yeah, they, 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 the committee weren't invited to an event just before yeah. Christmas, and the Department right. of Justice were launching a subsidy for, mm -hmm. for security equipment our security on farm vehicles and machinery. And the, the letter is to say that they were sorry they didn't invite the committee to the event to launch this exact subsidy that you're talking yeah, about. I, now, I don't know if it covers all that kind of stuff, mm. but it's it's in there. It's 4.9. Uh, it's in there on page 79 of your pack. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just saying if he's wanted to be able to explore that with them as well when they're up. Yeah, yeah I, th I think it's a good enough, valid enough point. I think in most farmers are now Starting, I think trackers and, tr and tractors mm -hmm. cost 500 pound probably to, to install. I think if there was some kind of grant aid on that, that uh, and maybe some help with farmers' union relating, you know, mm -hmm. across the board, it might encourage farmers, you know, to to to, to put trackers in vehicles. Like, I mean, all tractors are not worth 50,000 or 60, but I mean, the, the, you know, mm -hmm. the newer tractors are, the older tractors maybe there's one stolen last week, probably only worth 15. But at the same time. Trackers on the on those machines would 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 be a help. There's an absolute yeah, yeah. that, you know. Okay. Sorry. Ian. Sorry, Ian, again, go ahead. Um, no, I think you're right. But there are there are, there are trackers and there's invisible markings, you know, put on on all these machinery because I know they did it in our local area. You know, the place there, there was some kind of a, you know, they did it. Uh, Finance, you know, maybe a farmer had a page of maybe something like ten percent of the cost, you know, to get their digger or their tractor or whatever their you know, mark. But uh, you know, locally, when we met the local the commander of the place there, they they assured us there, you know, that it was local gangs, you know, that these these tractors, these cattle, all of the stuff here was was stolen by order. You know what I mean? Like and. You know, there's farms in our country there has lost 10 bullocks there a couple of weeks ago, you know, and there's nothing sure that the tags were cut off and they're into that or somewhere, you know. So. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just to, I know I had one farmer by the, the, the you know, he had a striker stolen on the 11th of November, about two minutes from me, and he gave the, the, the he had a sequence, uh, uh, the locks was, was a key sequence that only eight people knew, and he had a totally, he gave police the name of the guy that he totally suspected and was probably right, and he never questioned. And th this makes people very angry too, you know. But, yeah. yeah, that's right. There, there's no doubt about it. Uh, whilst we can do things and we should be promoting the actions that actually make it harder for things to be stolen, these criminals are in most cases uh, organised. Uh, they're organised gangs. They could go through several jurisdictions and have networks right across Europe. So even if you've marked a piece of your tractor or trailer, it's broken down or the ways of getting around electronic devices, whether it be a container they put the stuff into or break the tractor down or somehow neutralise the tractor, they have ways and means of doing it. So whilst all these things are good and should be promoted and should be encouraged to be used, we, we, we still need the police force to be more organised than the organised gangs. And I'm not seeing that at present. That's uh, why I think it's important then, you know, Chair, you know, to have that meeting. Yes. To stress from a committee's point of view. Yeah. You know, they In most cases, Mr. Chairman, the police knows exactly who's doing it. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. 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 That's the difficulty. Yeah. Let's get in heaven now. Okay. Uh, members content then. We, we, uh, we write back to the Justice Committee with our thoughts and our views uh, on this, and then we, we inquire about maybe more action, whether jointly or on our own, with regards to the police. Uh, in, in the guise of a formal meeting. Okay, members content? Okay, uh, moving on then. Are members content then with all the rest of the correspondence as suggested action there uh, on page 114? Okay, members content. Uh, moving then on to agenda item number eight, which is the Ford Work Programme. Uh, can I refer members to the Ford Work Programme on pages 229 to 235? This incorporates the Reservoirs Bill and other committee priorities as agreed at the planning meeting in December. Uh, on the Reservoirs Bill, uh, can I advise members that the first stage of the Reservoir Bill is expected on the 20th of January? 
the second stage on the 4th of February, followed by the committee stage on the 5th of February. Uh, at the second stage, there will be a debate on the pr principles of the bill, as you will know, and I will respond to the Minister on behalf of the committee. Uh, other members may also wish to contribute, of course. Uh, as agreed, the, the same posting ad will go into the papers the week commencing the 3rd of February, uh, which will invite written submissions. Uh, members should note that the committee schedule is full between now and Easter, and probably the debate we just had even more fuller. Mm. Uh, so just bear that in mind, members, as we go along the early stages of this term. Uh, we be careful what we wish for, because we, we do are, we're jam-packed, and we will end up running into additional meetings, which in itself is not a bad thing, but just mind that it then obviously increases uh, pressure on your diaries. Uh, visits then. As discussed at the planning meeting, there are two proposed visits, Thursday the 13th of February to Afby and then Thursday the 20th of March to Caffrey Greenmount Campus. Uh, can I seek confirmation from members that these dates are suitable? Uh, can I request that members put these dates into their diaries in order to ensure that a good attendance is achieved? Uh, Stella, do you need that information now immediately? No, just as we, we, we'll close it to the time, we'll, we'll decide whether we're getting a bus or whether people are making their own way there. Okay. But people could put it in their diaries, could, or at least discuss it within their parties to make sure there's could, could you send at least out, one representative. Could, could we send out an email, maybe? I'll send out an email, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Just it's, it's in your forward work programme there, but I'll send out yeah. an email as well. It's just to be handier to yeah. have. Yeah. And even our secretariat will pick it up uh -huh. if, we, okay. if we haven't informed them already. <laughs> uh, Barmore Show also, then, members this year's Barmore Show will take place on the 14th to 16th of May. So members may wish to consider what the committee role will be at that event. Uh, this will be an agenda even for a future meeting, but just to, to focus your minds on that and just have, have uh, in your spare time, if you have any, just have a wee thought about our more show and what we've done. Can you just remind us, Stella, what did we do last year? We went to the, the Dollard uh, business breakfast, followed by a meet and greet at yes. the assembly stand. It's good. Yes, and I, yeah, think it was far, well. I think that was far more productive than the following yeah, year, which yeah. when, was, was when we tried to have a meeting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it didn't work. Yeah. It just didn't there work. There was a lot of rural type questions, but not necessarily. So it was things like healthcare in rural areas, yes. transport in rural areas. There was it a lot was of poorly attended time. compared to the meet and greet. I thought it worked quite well yeah. with their allocated slots. Yeah. And when the stand was busy, there was more people even encouraged to go over. So it was very over. good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. are members content then to leave it at that and then mm -hmm. yeah. leave yeah. it that we do it? Let's keep it the status quo, do as we've done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're not going to come back on no. it. Yeah. People, people out of the shoes now are going to sit listening to a committee. Like, no, they're, they're not. not. No. It's not what they're there for. No. No. Members are content to go with what we've done last year, yeah. and then we'll leave it at that, and that's one less thing you have to worry about. Stella? Yeah. Okay, can I seek agreement then for the forward work programme? Agreed. Agreed. Okay, and then uh, agenda item number nine, and is any other business? Uh, is there any other business, members? No. No, OK. Agenda uh, item number 10 then, is date and time next meeting, uh, which will be held on Tuesday the 21st of January at 1.30pm in room 30, Parliament Buildings. Uh, just remind members of the event at 3 then, outside in the apron and then in the long gallery. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, members. Thank you. Thank you.